I was born in Barbados um, in the 1960s, uh, in the mid-1960s, which I think is a particularly important time um, for the modern world. <laughs> and um, I came to Toronto as a teenager. So I finished high school in Toronto. The school that I went to was an overwhelmingly immigrant school. And so that, that feeling of engaging Toronto as an immigrant settlement was really, really important for me and it has actually framed my entire adult life. I was in high school at a moment when Canadian multiculturalism as an idea and a practice was coming into its fullest. This in the, it is in the mid-1980s. And you actually had a group of people who were beginning to recognize themselves as Canadians through the language and the idea and the reality of multiculturalism. So there was a tremendous amount of goodwill on the part of people across ethnicity, across race, at least in that high school that I went to, to kind of work these questions out in, in nonviolent, interesting ways and, and to befriend each other. My social network is most definitely multiracial, multicultural, multiethnic. I would say that in my personal life, I live something that I would call multiculturalism par excellence. But I, I, would, I, would, I would preface that by saying that living multiculturalism par excellence means that one also lives a life of negotiation. So that it's not, it's not simply that, you know, this wonderful array of many different kinds of people come together and it kind of works magically. It's, it's about negotiating difference. It's about a constant learning process. It's about being able to recognize um, when one doesn't understand something. It's about being able to take risks, to ask a question. It's about being able to take risks to be dumb. <laughs> it's about taking a, a series of risks that ultimately, risks and interpretations, that ultimately uh, makes life as a human being livable without taking risks and without venturing interpretation, human life becomes pretty banal.